Hi, everyone, and welcome back to our weekly show, The Five, where we discuss the hottest topics in film and television, as well as give you our trailer reaction to the latest trailers. My name is Dan from The Upside Dan. And I'm Sean from Lost in the Real. And today we're going over Godzilla vs. Kong updates. We're going to look over the new stills release of Space Jam 2, A New Legacy, as well as give our final thoughts on the WandaVision finale. And of course, trailer reactions for the Netflix series Sky Rojo and original movie Thunder Force, as well as Michael B. Jordan's new Amazon film, Without Remorse. Let's do it. So first up this week, we got a lot of Godzilla vs. Kong updates. I swear every single week we're getting more and more information about this film. Of course, we all know Godzilla vs. Kong is going to be released in theaters and on HBO Max this March the 31st. Uh, first up for this news, Junkie XL, who is doing the score for the film, who also did the score for Mad Max Fury Road, one of my most favorite films, uh, has said that that aircraft carrier scene is going to be 19 minutes long we will play a clip from the aircraft carrier scene right up here uh but dan what do you think of this 19 minute action extravaganza scene i'm super excited for it i i, I love that um he said that and I, he is a good he's good at scoring movies so he, i think he's really gonna do a good job here in you know, you come to these MonsterVerse movies for the action, so that we're going to get 19 minutes of it. It's just so exciting. And I'm looking forward to March 31st. Yeah, I just thought this news was so refreshing because I think what audiences were really yearning for after the remake from Gareth Edwards and then the King of the Monsters movie is that we wanted the MonsterVerse action and... It, it, those movies didn't really deliver all that much on the action so to hear we have one 19 minute scene of these two duking it out just I was so excited about that <laughs> <laughs> And then um, it was also released from the director himself, Adam Wingard, that uh, a long time ago when he was a kid in second grade, he had a little uh, disagreement with one of his uh, fellow friends about who would win versus Godzilla and Kong. And all these years later, he says that he's finally getting the last laugh because he has uh, definitely said that we will have a definitive winner. So, who do you think is going to win it in this battle? Oh, so I think Kong is going to win. For um, actually, it's not even so much for a film standpoint; it's more for the you know the franchise because we've only had one Kong film, mm -hmm. but we've had two Godzilla films. Now, so I would like to obviously see more Kong. But the other thing is, there's a definite winner doesn't always mean that the other one dies. Mm -hmm. So that they could just win the fight maybe, or, you know, so maybe they both are alive at the end of this. Because they're both very popular monsters, so I, I could definitely see Godzilla getting another movie, Kong getting another movie. So I'm, I'm definitely excited to find out who's the definite winner. Yeah, you definitely have a good point about Kong because he's only had one standalone film in this monster verse. Uh, I I could say that Godzilla is far more uh, popular with audiences, uh, so I I have a hard time feeling that he would die. Uh, but it's definitely a possibility that he's still alive, but he loses the battle. And also, I've heard news that you know we're bringing in this Mecha Godzilla, almost like the humans have built this Mecha Godzilla to be both of them. And I would not like that to be the the winner. <laughs> I don't want the Mech Godzilla to win. I want w either Godzilla or King Kong to win. Not not the human Mecha Godzilla. Yes, I agree. Yeah, and and I hope they don't go like the Batman versus Superman route where they're fighting and then they have to, you know, team up to fight and you know another enemy. So I'm hoping they're not going to do that and they're going to have to both fight Mecha Godzilla. Mm -hmm. Or if they do do that, go back to the fighting each other. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
uh, yeah, I just hope the Mecha Godzilla gets beaten down. Uh, yeah. that's that's my hope. <laughs> yes, I yeah, I hope so. And the other thing that kind of piggybacking on the 19 minute scene is the movie as a whole, you know, is just going to be under two hours at one hour and 53 minutes, which actually gets me pretty, you know, pumped for it because I thought like Godzilla King of Monsters, I think that was too long. Mm-hmm. So I, de- I definitely think a monster versus movie like this, it's yeah, it's better a little under two hours. What do you think about that? Uh, I definitely think it should be under two hours. I think, like you said, King of the Monsters was way too long. Uh, it felt like two hours, like, I don't know, it felt like three hours. Yes, uh, it did. Feel like two hours and 12 minutes. Uh, so I think, you know, this is a silly, ridiculous action extravaganza. We don't need it to be longer than two hours. No. Nope. And that would also mean focusing more on the humans, probably, which we don't want. So, yeah, yeah under, yeah, yeah. Sorry, humans, we don't care about you. (laughs) (laughs) And number two on our list, a bunch of new stills were released for Space Jam 2, a new legacy by Entertainment Weekly. So let's look at these stills and kind of go through what we think about them, Dan. Uh, The first up is going to be the cover of Entertainment Weekly. We have LeBron with that awesome blue ball. Uh, That's kind of... Ironic. Also, okay. <clears throat> uh, and then, what I'm interested in in, in this uh, this cover is that the Looney Tunes look completely 2D in this cover. Yes, they do. Yes. And obviously, once we get into the other pictures, they are not. Are not. Nice. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the cover though plays on nostalgia, so maybe that's what they were, you know, going for. I like the cover. It definitely gets me more excited. And, you know, it just fills me with so much nostalgic feels. It definitely gives me the, the nostalgia, that's for sure. Okay, going to the next picture, we have LeBron James looking real angry, about to do a slam dunk with his blue balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Now his balls have electricity over them. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Thanos or something, or Thor or something. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, it's a cool picture, though. Yeah, but unrealistic. Well, obviously unrealistic, the whole. But, um, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're going for a realism here, Dan. <laughs> no. Um, but is that, like, Paris in the back? I don't know if that's Eiffel Tower. Yeah, I, I, I think, uh, to me, I'm like, okay, he's in Vegas. But oh. I, and I don't know what the, what the building next to him also looks like. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I feel like that's like a roller coaster right there. I think that's Vegas, probably. And next up, we got War Machine. Yes. Don Cheadle. And I think his son. Right. Yeah, I had no idea that Don Cheadle was in this movie until today. And that (laughs) makes me even more excited for this movie. I love Don Cheadle. (laughs) Yeah. It's supposed to be the villain. I th- yeah, yes, I believe so. I, from this picture, though, is that LeBron James's son? Yes, because I think the plot is his son gets warped into the Warner Brothers world or something. Okay. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they have to save him and go through all the different Warner Brothers films. So, like, Pennywise yeah, so- is going to be shot. Yeah. yeah, I was going to talk to you about that. That That is what makes me so excited about this movie. Is, I mean, just they brought up Mad Max Fury Road and Casablanca and the DC, Harry Potter, Harry Potter, Harry Potter. Pennywise. First of all, go Warner Brothers for having like amazing properties. Uh, yes. And second, to see them all in one film is going to be so cool. I know. I know. I must say this, though. Don't you think, like, okay, we're getting the multiverse in Marvel, and then now we're getting this Warner Brothers universe in Space Jam. Like, yeah. I feel like we're, yeah. we're going really overboard with the nostalgia here. Yeah, <laughs> and then Warner, I mean, Warner Brothers has its own. It's going to have the DCU um, multiverse mm-hmm. with the Flash movie. So, yeah, they're going to have two, kind of. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> yes. Okay, so next up we have this picture of Bugs Bunny. What do you oh, think yes. of the design of Bugs Bunny? I personally like it. I it changes it enough, but you obviously know who you know the character is. It um kind of almost like the new Tom and Jerry movie. It's like it doesn't look exactly like that, but it just they change it up enough to kind mm-hmm. of make it more modern. What do you think about it? 
Yeah, um, I really like it. And when I first saw the Entertainment Weekly poster, I was really excited because I am usually a traditionalist when it comes to like 2D animation. I'm I have a big place uh, in my heart for traditional animation. So when I saw that they did go more CGI with this, I was a little bummed. But when I did see this, I love the character design. I think they still have kept the essence of Bugs Bunny and of these characters uh, while still making it modernized. So I'm pleased to see it, but I really want to see it in action when the trailer drops to really make up my mind. Yes, yes, same here. And it's fun in this picture to see the background trying to pick out what the different characters are, who, who the different characters are going to be. Yeah, so I'm, I feel I'm, like I, got some like Wonder Woman, people from Wonder Woman in there. Yes. <laughs> Godzilla. <laughs> some kind of giant monster. And then, yeah. okay, is this, or, I don't know, this Jabberjaw, is that his name? That white thing in the background? I don't know. That's, I'm so curious. He looks, yeah, he looks familiar. Yeah, well, from what we can see, it's blurry, but, um, but yeah, I don't know who that is. Yeah, because Hanna-Barbera, I think, is owned by Warner Brothers, so Jabberjaw would go in there. I don't know, I'm just getting a Jabberjaw vibe, but we'll see. Obviously, it's so blurry, we can't really tell, but... No, yeah. Here here comes us doing our conspiracy theories and yes. whatnot. <laughs> okay, on to the next picture. Uh, we got a very stoic LeBron... And a very pissed off Tweety. <laughs> yes, I I love it because Tweety Bird's one of my favorites from too. the the yes the Looney Tunes. I just love seeing him right there. In again, he looks so good, like modernized, but you know, kept, keeping the essence of Tweety Bird. Yeah, and he, Tweety looks like he's about to beat some ass, and I am so there for it. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then, of course, we have Lola Bunny, who is, I, I, I swear they're, they're going to make a controversy about everything, but people are saying, you know, like, she doesn't look as good or basically as sexy as yeah. she did in the first movie. <laughs> yep, I heard that. Yeah, it's crazy. Any, any, anything could be controversy. Yeah. Yeah. True. yeah. In my opinion, I think she looks great. I'm sorry that, you know, her boobs are smaller or whatever. <laughs> but, like, who cares? Lola Bunny's awesome. Yes. And I'm just excited to see her again. And she looks sporty and cute. So. She does. Uh, yeah. So what are your kind of, like, final thoughts for Space Jam, A New Legacy? Again, I'm just so excited. All the nostalgic. I definitely have to watch the first one again. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen it in a while. But oh. I've been wanting to watch it again. So I'm definitely going to watch it again before this. And I'm so looking forward to seeing this movie because, like you said, the, all the Warner Brothers characters mm -hmm. that we get to see. Some people are calling that gimmicky, but I'm like, no, it's awesome. Um, I'm yes. sorry, but Space Jam is already gimmicky in the first place by bringing yes. in the Looney Tunes. To me, it just seems like an obvious next step for them to go by bringing in other Warner Brothers characters. Uh, I am, like, beyond excited for this movie. Uh, these pictures even have up my excitement even more. Um, hopefully I won't be disappointed, but I'm, like, a casual fan of the first Space Jam, but for some reason this one has just got me pumped out of my mind. Yes, me the same. Space Jam A New Legacy will be in theaters and also on HBO Max on July 16th. Awesome. Can't wait. So our number three news item of the day is going to be the breakout star of Bridgerton, Regé Jean Page, has been cast in two new huge films. The first one being Hasbro and Paramount's Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, yes, they are doing a, another Dungeons and Dragons. Hopefully it will be better than that abysmal first try. Uh, <laughs> What I'm really shocked about this movie is that they have really put together an incredible cast for this film. Uh, so we have Regé Jean Page, and then we also have Chris Pine, Hugh Grant in a villain role, Michelle Rodriguez, Sophia Lillis, and Justice Smith. So I'm really, really excited about that cast. What are your thoughts? No, yeah, the same sentiments. I, that cast sounds like we're stacked. It sounds really good, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it even more for that cast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cast is what's really calling my name here. I just hope they take 
what uh, was so awful about that original Dungeons and Dragons movie and really, you know, do some world building here and create some captivating characters because uh, this could go really, really wrong. But with the cast, I, I think they're, they've started out on a good foot. Yes, I agree. Totally. And I, yeah, please be better than that. I barely remember that other one, but yes, yeah, luckily. It's, it's real bad. <laughs> That's all I can say. So Dungeons and Dragons is going to be released on May 27th, 2022, as long as it doesn't get pushed back like everything else in Hollywood nowadays. Uh, his next casting was in the Rousseau Brothers' new film, The Gray Man. Now, this is a Netflix original film, and it has been said that this is going to be the most expensive Netflix film that they've ever made so far. And it starts filming in two weeks. Um, we have, in this cast... Ryan Gosling, Chris Evans, Anna de Armas, Billy Bomb Thornton, and Alfre Woodard, and of course now Regé Jean Page is cast in this film as well. It's being touted as an action drama about a CIA agent who is hunted around the globe by a former cohort and is based on the first book in a book series. So what are your thoughts on this one? Again, I'm excited. This cast is amazing. I, I like love everyone that's in this cast, and the the premise sounds cool. That it's an action drama, and of course, I love the Russo brothers because I love Marvel. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing anything they do. I have not seen Cherry yet, but as, yeah. But as far so far, everything I've seen them do is good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think this one seems more up their alley uh, when it comes to, like, an action drama. Uh, whereas I think they were trying something really different with Cherry. Haven't seen it yet, um, but this definitely does seem a little bit more in their wheelhouse. So obviously Netflix believes that uh, believes in them and this property because, I mean, they're spending a lot of money on yes. it. So. Yes, big budget. Number four on the list is Trailer Reactions. We're going to start out with Voyagers. Let's do it. Uh, so, do, what are your thoughts for Stan? I I want to check that out day one. Oh, <laughs> <me too. laughs> so I actually saved that one. I my first time watching it right now. Wow, that that was crazy. The imagery, yeah. the act, the actors. I'm so excited for that. Yeah, uh, literally, that looks like some twisted, psychosexual, dark sci-fi, neon-lit thriller. Like, I, 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 I don't know. It's like, it should be called Sean the Movie. Like, this, that's yeah. made for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, April 9th can't come fast enough. I know, it comes out soon, too. Yes. I talked, and then the, uh, it's written and directed by Neil Berger, who did The Illusionist and Limitless. Love both of those films. Uh, this looks like right up my alley, and this is like skyrocketed to the top of my most yes. anticipated of the year. <laughs> oh, yes, totally. Yeah. Yeah, it looks messed up. I, I don't know, like, and I love this trailer, too, because it doesn't give really anything away, but it shows you exactly w the feeling that you're going to get from watching the film. Yes. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy that you enjoyed that trailer. Yes. I thought you would. I thought you would. <laughs> <laughs> The next trailer we're going to be doing is Without Remorse, the Michael B. Jordan-led action flick based on the Tom Clancy novel, which is being produced by Amazon Studios. Yeah. Another April release. Okay. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that one? Um... I love Michael B. Jordan. Like, I absolutely love him. So I will see him in anything. I don't think this is necessarily a movie made specifically for me. Uh, it looks really entertaining. And it is actually interesting to me that Michael Jordan's kind of playing an anti-hero, uh, which interests me. But yeah, it's not necessarily my cup of tea, but I will definitely watch it. It looks, it looks entertaining enough. Yeah, I pretty much mirror everything you just said. I, yeah, I love Michael B. Jordan. But yeah, that doesn't look too much for me, but I, it definitely looks like it'd be an interesting, you know, movie to watch. So I, I am looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it doesn't look like anything 
different, like unique or different. You know, it, it looks like a, you know, just a good old, you know, classic site or classic action flick. Yes, definitely. Um, have you watched John Krasinski's Jack Ryan or no? And I, I really liked it. I was surprised at how much I was uh, captivated by it. Actually, yeah, I started it. I haven't, been, I haven't watched much of it, but I, I did watch a few episodes when it first premiered. But yeah, no, yeah, same way, kind of. I just haven't gone back into it though. Next up on our trailer list is the Octavia Spencer and Melissa McCarthy-led Netflix film, Thunder Force. Now let's get into the trailer. Let's do it. Um, I'll go first on this one. Okay. Uh, I, okay, I love Melissa McCarthy. I, I think she's so funny and she's shown how funny she can be in Bridesmaids and Spy which I think is a great movie but she needs to stop making movies with her husband because they have no laughs and that trailer made me chuckle at the very end and that's because Jason Bateman was at the very end of it but it was basically a laughless trailer I'm still gonna watch it because I love both Melissa McCarthy and Octavia Spencer but I'm not expecting much Yes, and uh, again, 100% mirroring what you just said. They, yeah, the husband and wife do need to stop, you know, making these films together. I do think it looks kind of fun. Like, like you said, I'm gonna watch it. And I, I like Octavia Spencer, Melissa McCarthy when she's doing things right. Like, I love Spy mm-hmm. and Bridesmaids, of course. And um, I think she can really be funny. Um, a hot take, I don't know how hot is this. I don't hate the new Ghostbusters. I don't either. Yeah, I thought it was pretty, kind of okay. Anyway, it's not great. Let's no. not let's not go to it's great, but it's definitely. I think it's it's hated on too much. I, I yeah. think it's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, Spy and Bridesmaids are the perfect, you know, examples of her at her funniest. Mm-hmm. And Octavia Spencer, she does different things. Like she's in Ma, a horror thriller film. She's in, she she does Bad Santa too. I think she does this she does serious films she does award-winning films she's doing all sorts of stuff and i, I really love her for that you yeah. know jason bateman yep the same with jason bateman at the end i i, I love jason bateman so much yeah uh i definitely like i said i'm gonna watch it but there is no expectation on this being good at all but it does nope. look a little bit more fun than like super intelligence or like any of her other movies that Tammy. she's made Tammy was so bad. Oh, God. Um, yeah. Oh. Um, and I think April 9th is the same release date as um, The Voyagers, right? So. Yeah. I so mean, April, is, yeah. April is looking to be a really good month, actually. Yes. Yes. Um, so, yeah, this one could be just a fun thing to have on at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Next up is the new Netflix series that is dropping on March 19th called Sky Rojo. Let's see how it looks. Let's go. What do you think, Dan? It looks interesting. It, lo- it looks, you know, it looks good. I, I probably would check that one out. It, I like the premise. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they, they seem to be good actresses. That's what we've seen. And yeah, uh, yeah, I think it, it looks worth checking out. What did you think? Uh, I think it looks really cool. Uh, I love Money Heist. Have you seen that? No, I have not. Uh, definitely watching it's giving me those really stylish crime thriller vibes from that show uh and then also it's also giving me some have you seen smoke and aces no it's a carnahan action movie with chris pine i do know that one yeah i didn't see that one though but yeah, uh, it's giving me that kinetic, stylized action, like overly violent and just like with some badass bitches kicking ass. And I don't know, it looks like a lot of fun. I definitely want to check this one out. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'll probably check it out as well. The next topic on our list is WandaVision. Season one has premiered the whole series as far as we know so far. Now we are going to discuss the finale and the season as a whole. But just so you guys know, this is going to be a spoiler discussion. So if you have not watched episodes one through nine, the whole series, do not continue watching unless you don't care. (laughs) Um, So Sean, what are your initial thoughts of the season finale? So I decided uh, about the third episode in, I was just going to wait and 
just binge it all whenever the last episode came out. So that's what I did uh, all night last night was uh, watch WandaVision. Uh, and I'm actually really happy that I ended up doing that, uh, even though it was really hard to not get spoilers through these last eight weeks. Um, but WandaVision. Uh, first, I should say, I guess, I am probably not the biggest Marvel fan in the world. I definitely love the movies. Uh, I love Avengers Infinity War. I love Civil War. Um, but I, I'm not the biggest fan out there of Marvel. So what I think of WandaVision is... Uh, I absolutely loved it. <laughs> uh, I was definitely not sure the first couple of episodes, uh, especially, you know, the first one, because it was almost all this 50s sitcom. I had no idea what they were doing, but where they went with this show, it's just so unique and it's something, you know, Marvel really went out on a limb to try something different. And I think it really, really paid off for them. What about you, Dan? Yes. So you, you scared me for a second because... You made me think that you didn't like it. <laughs> um, but no, I loved it. I, I love I love this show so much. Like you said, Marvel went out on a limb. Marvel did something bold. Mm-hmm. Something they've never done. Something like clearly anybody's ever done, really. You know, it was very cool to see all these different sitcoms, but at the same time have the MCU feel to it. But mm-hmm. have the new MCU feel to it as well. You know, to start off Phase 4 with. But yes, yeah, so the, the, yeah, the first few episodes, I think you made the right choice, especially as not a big of a Marvel fan. Mm-hmm. I th- I even said that in my first few deep dives, I just said, I, I think if you're not that big or if you're not that big on the first couple episodes, wait, or at least until the first five episodes, maybe, because I think that's when it really starts to pick up a little more or wait until the whole season is done and then binge watch it like you did. So th- yeah, I definitely think you did the right thing. But yeah, no, I loved it loved the romance i didn't really care that much about their romance before this show and mm-hmm. now i love them and even the characters i mean i liked them and i think elizabeth olsen and paul benning do a great job but this show just blew me out of the water and i thought they they did the performances that they were so well as these characters and made me care about the characters and their romance so much more yeah I I think that's a really good point, Dan. I think that both Vision and Scarlet Witch were two characters that you liked, but you didn't get to spend a lot of time with them uh, in the Avengers films. So to have this show where we really get to know the both of them, uh, and especially with Scarlet Witch and her backstory in the eighth episode, I just fell in love with Scarlet Witch and Wanda Maximoff and Elizabeth Olsen. I think that she is such a treasure. Marvel is so blessed to have her playing this role. I think she should win all of the awards. Uh, The Emmy, the Golden Globe. I think she is absolutely incredible in this show. Yes, totally agree. She needs to win these awards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought she was just incredible. She was I thought that I just love Elizabeth Olsen so much. And um, yes, and I think also Catherine Hahn does an amazing job as well. Yes, like amazing. Like she's going from the kooky neighbor, and all of them are going from these sitcom to sitcom, so they have to act like different characters almost. But she's going to the kooky neighbor, the villain, the, yeah. the friend, the enemy. You know, it's just so I, I really good job here by her, too, as well. Yeah, I think that Katherine Hahn is one of the most underrated actresses in the business. I have been following her career for years and years, and I am just so damn happy for her that she has finally found a role that she could really show off, off not only her comedy chops, but also her dramatic chops as well. And she just, she killed, she killed this role. Yes. She seems like she's just out of the sitcoms too. So when she's doing the comedy, she's perfect for the nosy neighbor type. So yes, yeah. I yeah, hundred percent agree. And I, I I thought she was underrated for the you know the longest. Mm-hmm. She does stuff like like Parks and Rec. She was great in that, and she does movies like Bad Words and Step Brothers. She does these all different you know kind of roles, and then this is just all of that in one. Now she's a household name, and she deserves it. Yes, you bring up her backstory. Um, Scarlet, which is eight, in the eighth episode, 
one of the quotes that got everybody, and I think that this quote is one of the best of the MCU, but I think the scene is one of the best of the MCU, is Vision and Wanda at the compound, at the Avengers compound. When Vision's like, what is what is grief if not love persevering? Mm-hmm. I just, I love it. I, I'm, I'm not scared to say that's like the best the MCU has to offer. That was such a really surreal scene. What did you think of it? I loved that scene. That episode, it's so funny because I I had remembered that you brought up that the seventh and the eighth episode, or was it the sixth and the seventh? I'm not the sure, s- but some people were getting disappointed somewhere in the last couple of episodes. The seventh. The seventh. Uh, okay. Yes. So the seventh episode. For me, it was... Okay, so a bad thing about this series is... Well, not a bad thing, but like... We get our theories, we get our hints, we theorize, and the speculation is grander than what the show is going to give us, or it's different than what the show is going to give us, so we get disappointed when our theories don't come to fruition. Mm -hmm. So, we all were expecting this big reveal for the... um, We were all expecting this big reveal for the aerospace engineer that Monica hyped up for two episodes, and then Mm -hmm. it's nobody. People were like, oh, it's going to be John Krasinski as... Reed Richards from the Fantastic Four, which would have been amazing, and yeah, I would have freaked out. So when that didn't happen, when we got just some rando <laughs> as the <laughs> aerospace engineer, I was let down. And not only that is, but The Office and Modern Family are two of my favorite shows, and I don't think they did either of them that great. The Modern Family stuff was great. Like her, she was Julie Bowen. Like like she acted just like Julie Bowen. Um, it was amazing, and Julie Bowen even called out the show on Instagram and like congratulated it, and and it was around the Modern Family anniversary, I believe, and I just thought that was so cool, and so I did like the talking head stuff of mostly Wanda and Agatha. I thought those were pretty funny, but I feel like they could have done more with The Office, and it would have mm-hmm. been a perfect thing if John Krasinski was in that episode as the aerospace engineer in an Office episode with Asian Jim. Jimmy Woo. Mm-hmm. I thought that would have been perfect. So yeah, theorizing yeah. just kind of messed up our expectations. Yeah, I think that no matter what happens, especially in something like this, people's uh, people are going to get disappointed because they've hyped up so much and they've done so much theorizing. Uh, you know, it's never going to live up to that. But what I can say, uh, what WandaVision did, uh, but once again, my experience was different because I watched it all in one lump uh, at one time. But I just thought it kept building and building and kept morphing into something really special and the last couple of episodes uh i loved the seventh episode but the eighth episode i was like wow they've really built this up into something really incredible and then that last episode the finale it seemed like I was watching a Marvel movie in the theaters. The special effects were absolutely outstanding. The action sequences between the two visions. I loved that reveal, how they came together in that library of sorts. Uh, And I loved that scene. And I just thought it culminated uh, into probably one of my favorite Marvel uh, pieces of entertainment. Yes, it definitely has become one of my favorite MCU projects. So, uh, so much and you don't expect I don't think anyone really expected that from seeing the trailers because it was mostly the black and white scenes yeah and um, but Disney Plus has really outdid themselves I don't mm-hmm. really watch it but the Mandalorian everyone's raving about that and now they have this and then they're going to have Cap Falcon and the Winter Soldier in a couple weeks so excited yes, for- <laughs> me too so now I have even more hope for those future shows because of this yeah yes and um, Agatha all along that song was so catchy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it was Agatha all along. Yeah, that was just great. I mean, it was yeah. great. Yes, and I think people were let down kind of by that because everyone guessed that she was Agatha Harkness. Oh, really? Um, I don't even know. Well, is she in the comics? I, I don't know. Yes, she's in the comics, so I didn't really know that either. But everyone that was versed in the comics, I guess, guessed that she was Agatha Harkness, and there were clues towards it, so they mm-hmm. didn't feel so. Um, so. Thinking about it more, I do love the seventh episode now, even though I was let down by it the first time. Mm-hmm. I do I do love it more now because I took back my expectations, which is what I did for this finale. I was like, I'm not having any expectations, so I loved it. That reveal was really well done. Even if you knew that she was going to be Agatha Harkness, that reveal was very well written mm-hmm. and well acted. So I, I personally, I loved that reveal. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I want to get into what your thoughts about these cut scenes at the very end of the finale mean. I don't really necessarily understand them, so if you can kind of give me some insight. So the first cut scene that's in the middle has um, Monica Rambeau. So, and then there's the the creature from Captain Marvel. What are they called? Scrawl. Scrawl. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This is where I'm at in the Marvel Universe, guys. Okay, yeah. so bear with me. <laughs> yes. Um, so yes, she's the Scrawl brings her into the theater, mm-hmm. and I, I I'm guessing that it means because at the end of um, Far From Home, remember Nick Fury was at the sword base in space or something, mm-hmm. and um, yes, so because it was revealed that the Scrawls were being Nick Fury and Maria Hill, um, and um. So I think that he wants to see Monica Rambeau. That's why I'm guessing the he that she references is. That's what I'm guessing. Unless it could be that leader scroll from, I can't think of his name, but Tom, uh, not Tom. Oh, Ben Ben Mendelsohn. Ben Mendelsohn. Yes. Uh, I was thinking of Tom Hiddleston, Loki, and then I was thinking, (laughs) yeah. Um, So anyway, um, so yes. So he, it could be him that, that wants to see Monica up there. And even though I just said that I didn't let myself have expectations for the finale, both cut scenes, I was like, oh, this is where Reed Richards is going to show up. This is where Reed Richards, no. Um, but I wasn't disappointed because I didn't let myself think that that was going to happen. Right. But anyway. Uh, yes. So that's what that one means, I think, that they're going to, she's going to, it's going to set up for Captain Marvel 2. Monica's going to go up to, yeah, up to space or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the second cut scene, we see Wanda, who is out in the middle of nowhere by herself it seems but then all of a sudden there's her as scarlet witch in a different room looking through that book that witch book dark cold yeah okay dark cold yeah <laughs> Ex- explain that to me please yes okay so i i the dark cold's from the comics and um mm-hmm. that was actually a theory that people were like oh it's not the dark world when they first saw it in agatha's lair because it doesn't have the same symbols and stuff on it that it does in the comics and I guess it was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as well, and it looked different. But Agents right. of S.H.I.E.L.D. not really that connected to this. Right. Um, but anyway, yeah, so a Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange can um, almost put his body on autopilot, I guess, and be out of his body and researching stuff, studying stuff as mm-hmm. his soul, kind of. So that's what Wanda was doing, I believe, with her red eyes. I think she was going through the dark hold, this, you know, Book of the Damned or whatever Agatha called it. And I'm hoping, and I believe that she's trying to bring back Billy and Tommy. So, which I'm, I'm definitely hoping um, for, because I, I really am a fan of Billy and Tommy. Mm-hmm. And what their stories are going to mean for the Young Avengers. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought the actors of Billy and Tommy were actually pretty great for kid actors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was not expecting the kids to be so prevalent in the show. Uh, I think they definitely gave them enough that I was sad to see them go, and I definitely want to see more. So, yeah, I'm hoping she brings back them. And even though I, I think that White Vision is going to be the Vision now, because, I mean, Vision gave him his memories. Mm-hmm. So, I think that White Vision might show up soon, you know, in the future and be Wanda's maybe be Wanda's love interest again and which I know is like with comic books they bring back people from the dead so it's like does it mean anything that they died in the first place but I don't know I think it still means something I mean their scene goodbye was so sad Vision and Wanda's this is like so sad I I cried (laughs) Uh, yeah so but yeah no I'm looking forward to the future of the MCU definitely if you guys want to hear me talk even more WandaVision, Sunday, March 7th at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, I will be on Jim and Rob Overanalyze Movies. We will be overanalyzing the heck out of WandaVision as a whole. So definitely check that out. And also, I've done deep dives for each episode so far of WandaVision. If it's not up already, my ninth episode and finale episode is coming up soon. So definitely go check those out. The links to my channel and Rob's channel will be down in the description. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching The Five. We will see you next week where, once again, we continue giving our hot takes and overanalyzing all of the news coming out of Hollywood in film and television. We will see you then. And I hope to see you guys this Sunday on Rob's channel. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.